What's good, YouTube? We are back again with another video, and this video is going to be on the Jordan 37 Beyond Borders is the name of the actual colorway, but this is also a slight performance review. So I didn't play multiple days in this, but I played a couple of games. I think I got the most out of this review. For the most part, I feel like I know what the shoe plays like. And I will say, it's very close to the Jordan 36. So if you enjoy playing basketball in the Jordan 36, you're gonna enjoy playing basketball in the Jordan 37, all right? Now let's take a look. So we have, <laughs> wrong shoe, hold on. <laughs> My bad. So we have the Jordan 37 Beyond Borders and quite honestly, this colorway didn't look that good to me when I saw them in promotional pictures. You take a look at them there. But the more I have them in hand and the more I've seen them on feet, they're actually not a bad looking sneaker. And I know that's just me probably loving Jordan brand and whatever they put out. I'm smelling the sauce. They play great. So now I like the shoe a lot more than I did before, before I actually played in them. And then also like they're not a bad looking sneaker. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of highlights. I only played about a game and a half, but here's some highlights. So again, back to this sneaker, the colorway itself reminds me of what Jordan wore in 1992. He had a full outfit. It was a Jordan 7 inspired outfit. And this would make sense because it's called Beyond Borders. And he was in Barcelona in 1992 during the Olympics. And he wore this in one of his promotional videos. So you see Michael Jordan. It's Michael Jordan airtime, I believe where you see him walking around the stadium in this outfit and he looks crazy. He looks like a nut job, but this sneaker is inspired by that outfit, in my opinion, right? They never really officially came out and said that that's what it was inspired by. But if you take a look at the outfit and the outsole, it just makes sense, right? Now, performance-wise, we have a zoom strobe on the forefoot. We have a second zoom unit underneath the zoom strobe. Same thing like the Jordan 36, except the second unit underneath, it's a little bit bigger, right? So we have great four foot cushioning, my opinion. Now we don't have the Eclipse plate like we once did. I missed the Eclipse plate. I think they were great. 34, 35, 36 had the Eclipse plate. We go back to a carbon fiber plate, right? So we see that here. You can feel it's decoupled. You could feel the space a little bit more where the Eclipse plate, it was just a seamless feeling, which is great. Now on the back, you have the Formula 23 foam. I was very skeptical at first because Stepping Christian wasn't that great, but when you actually play in this, you can feel the Formula 23. Now granted, I'm 230 pounds, so I'm giving this Christian the most it can handle. Pause. But I absolutely felt the difference once I started playing basketball. Now, if you wear these in the house and you're just walking around and stepping on your carpet or just walking around period you're not going to really feel the performance in this but if you're actually playing ball you definitely feel that this is a crash pad i will say it felt pretty good another thing i wanted to mention is you see these fuse lines right now at first they look pretty hideous especially in promotional pictures but they actually keep you contained pretty good. You know what? Let me just grab a Jordan 36 real quick. There wasn't many issues that I had with the Jordan 36 as far as a ball sneaker. But one of the issues is even though this midsole kind of comes up and keeps you contained in that footbed, I felt like the Lino weave when you pushed laterally, so side to side movements, defensive movements, you were kind of coming over. You never did. You never rolled over because it's so wide and this part keeps you contained, but you are reaching its limits. So I feel like the Jordan 37 keeps you more contained because of the extra fuse that we have on the lateral and medial sides. Now the extra fuse on the side also can play like a flywire. 
So if you tighten this shoe up, you kind of have this extra containment because of the extra fuse on the side, right? These were such a pleasure to play in. It's my favorite sneaker to play in. But if there was something that you can improve on, I felt like it was the containment on your foot. Other than that, man, look at this Eclipse plate, right? This Eclipse plate is so crazy. These two are pretty top notch. So we spoke about the cushion. We spoke about the Lino weave. Now, the Lino weave is very durable. I seen Grant Williams bust out of his Jordan 37s. That's not going to happen, right? I mean, we've seen guys playing in the Jordan 37 and nobody bust out of his sneaker like he did. The uppers are very comfortable, very lightweight. This is the most cushion you can get at the lightest weight you can get. What's better than that? As far as fit's concerned, I like the fit a little bit more. It felt like a one-of-one -one fit on the Jordan 36, but the Jordan 37 wasn't a bad fit at all. I had my Nike Elite socks. It kept me contained. It felt good on foot. It felt super comfortable. I never at one point felt like anything was digging into my heel or to my Achilles a little bit too much. These were a comfortable sneaker to play in. I haven't played in like three or four months, maybe even longer actually. And this is the first time I played was in these sneakers and they felt great. They felt like they didn't miss a beat at all, especially coming from the Jordan 36. So like I said, fellas, or ladies, when playing in the Jordan 36, it felt awesome. This is a great performance sneaker. It makes me like the shoe a lot more. Very lightweight, crazy, crazy cushioning. So to me, you can't go wrong with either one. If you could find these on sale, grab them. If you're playing ball, if you're playing basketball and you want to have a good basketball sneaker, find a Jordan 36 on sale. I think eventually we will see these go on sale pretty often. So if you want to wait, wait for these because again nobody's probably buying these like they bought the jordan 36 and even the jordan 36 we've seen a lot of them go on sale which one i would say is better it's tough the fit and containment is better in this shoe the heel cushioning the formula 23 is a little bit better in this shoe the bounce on this one full length zoom strobel not just the forefoot like this one feels incredible it's close. If this is a 9 to a 9.5, this is about a 9. That's how good they are, in my opinion. And I can't wait to play more basketball in these, right? So on that note, I hope this helps somebody out. This is 40-year-old knees, 40-year-old <laughs> legs. Bro, I'm washed. So for me to play ball in these, not get injured, not feel too sore, felt very comfortable on the court, didn't feel like I was going to slip. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to mention. Sorry, I did not mention the traction. I think these have better traction. Now, I play in the most dustiest high school court, or I believe it's a junior high school, elementary school, basketball court in the planet. Like, it's super dusty. It's probably never cleaned. And I felt like these were a lot more grippier than these. So I will say, as far as traction is concerned, this one has a little bit better traction, in my opinion, where I felt like in the Jordan 36s, I used to slide out just slightly. So you want to be mindful of that as well. All right. So back to where I was before. Um, either one is a great option. Whatever you can get for a cheaper price, I say that's the one you go for. Right. You're not going to lose with either one. So if you can get these on discount, go for it. If you can get these on discount, go for it. But the cheaper model would win because they're that close in performance. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on anything performance related, shoot it down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. All right, we out. Peace.